Hey, I'm Justin and welcome back to the Tradesman Garage. About a month ago, we ordered a Shapoko 3XXL uh, from Carbide3D's website. Uh, today, I'm gonna show you the unboxing and assembly of that machine, as well as a sneak peek at another video. So let's go check it out. So here we have it, the Shapoko 3XXL. Came in a really big box, a really heavy box at that. Uh, the guys from FedEx actually had to have two guys and a dolly to get it to my door. Uh, so that was a chore, getting it in the house, coming around and putting it back into the garage. But we got it, right? So once we got that down and we opened it up, uh, I just dove right into making sure every part uh, that was supposed to be shipped was in the box. And Carbide 3D did a very good job here. Their packing was adequate. There was nothing broken. The only critique I have for them is I was short on zip ties. Uh, I think in my box I had six zip ties in total. And I think in the instructions, it calls for somewhat like 20 zip ties, but no big deal. I had some zip ties on hand in my own shop. So I just used what I had to offset the amount that was missing. We pressed on. So after checking all the inventory, making sure everything was uh, where it needed to be, that we got everything, uh, we start the assembly process with the base and the side rails. So from the beginning here, uh, just go step by step right read the dang instructions don't try to go ahead of it the biggest mess up i had here is I, i'm reading the instructions but i'm i'm halfway reading them right so i get the idea of what i'm supposed to do and then i think you know i got this, this is easy well it is an easy assembly if you follow the instructions so i tightened down all these screws but i failed to see that i needed them to be loose until i got pretty much everything built because then we're going to square the machine and tighten it up so I tightened these screws down and loosened them back up at least two to three times before I figured out what I was doing wrong. So my assembly took about six and a half hours. Uh, average assembly time is about seven to eight hours. But it's not, a, it's not a race. You're not trying to see who can build the thing the fastest. You want it to be built right the first time. It stops you from going back and having to redo everything, tune the machine again. You can just get right into cutting what you paid for. So I'm working on the Z-axis right now. And the only thing that I messed up here and I found out about a week later was right there on that metal mount. So that little silver router mount, there's a round coupling that goes in from the top to the bottom. I actually put it in upside down. So read your instructions. Fun fact, when you put the uh, axis side panels on there, those wires that are wrapped around uh, the two wheel pulleys, Make sure you undo those before you mount the actual rail. <laughs> Found that out the hard way. So another funny uh, part of my build here, right? I assembled the base of the Shapoko in the right orientation, but then once I had it put together, I turned it for some reason. I thought it was backwards. <laughs> Found out I was right the first time. So after I mounted the side rails on, and had everything at least set to where it wouldn't move too much. Uh, my wife helped me and we rotated the machine back to the original spot that I had it. Uh, that way it, it lines up perfectly with how I built the table and where this thing is actually gonna sit. If you wanna see how I built that table, wait till the very end. There's a sneak peek at the next video for the Shapoko build. Um, I'll drop a link in the description too once I get that video live. But yeah, watch the very end of the video. The last couple of seconds, it's uh pretty cool here we're tightening the belts uh, there's a lot of controversy how tight do you put the belts is, is, is there a certain measurement really there's not it's kind of more or less like a guitar string but you, you just got to kind of feel for it there is a measurement and in some sort of gauge online there's a couple of forums that you can read but really all we're trying to do is make it tight so it doesn't wobble around but not too tight to the point where it's messing the motor up so in the middle of assembly, I actually got my order in from Tools today. I was excited about it, took a little picture for you. Uh, they got a, a wide variety of bits that I'm gonna be using here in the future. So I uh, figured I'd just drop that in there. But now moving on to the second day of assembly, uh, we started the finishing process. We're attaching the wires, uh, the chain drag assembly, making sure all the belts are tight to the way they're supposed to be. And uh, a little tip here, so when you're attaching this chain drag assembly have it pre-laid out just like in the picture 
Uh, when you go to mount it to the actual machine, set it up there loose. That way you can pull these cables freely through the chain drag assembly before you plug all the cords into the motherboard. It's gonna help in the long run. I learned that the hard way. It took me about 20 minutes to figure out why these cables weren't lining up correctly, and that is the quickest way to fix this problem. So you'll see that here shortly, um, and I'll, I'll speed it up a little bit to about 600 times uh, recording speed. So overall, the instructions for putting this thing together, uh, Carbide3D did a great job. It, it's self-explanatory, dang near, and there's, there's pictures along the way follow the pictures slow down and and you can't mess this up i did it because i was in a hurry i was too dang excited i was like a little kid in a candy store right i just got my first brand new toy and i gotta play with it so i wanted to hurry up and get this thing done it hurt me in the long run and i had to readjust a bunch of things uh, towards the end of assembly so slow down do it right the first time here i'm just attaching the uh, the sensors and this is kind of just a little quick look at how they're supposed to be oriented. It, it's exactly what it looks like in the picture. So, now to putting this mounting plate on. So, this is the entire housing, this is the motherboard, this is the brains of the machine right here. So be very careful with it. Try not to break it. So here I'm putting this little connector on. Make sure it's seated in all the way. And then when you plug the X, Y, Z, and if you have a probe, your probing access in there, uh, it, it might actually pull out the back. So before you put the plate cover on, make sure it's firmly pressed all the way in. Now remember I was talking about pulling those cables out of the chain drag assembly? This is what I'm talking about. I couldn't figure out why they weren't fitting. I didn't realize that you could pull those cables freely inside that chain drag assembly. So once you have it all plugged in, if you see how short it is up top and it's tight, all these cords are supposed to go in through the top and come out and wrap to the right, but some of them weren't fitting. So just grab the chain drag assembly and pull the cables through before you even attach those cables to the motherboard. It's gonna make the process so much faster. Once you get them seated correctly and there's enough spacing with your wires and you've got it all set and the plate cover fits, you'll push the rest of the cords back into the chain drag assembly, just enough to where it's, it's tight but not too tight and there's not too much slack with those cables coming out the top of the box. You don't want it to flop around. It needs to sit pretty still once the plate cover is put on the top. So towards the end, once we figured out that all the cables are in place, everything fits real good, just hold them up up top and then put that cover plate over the top of the box. Cinch them down with the four screws provided and you are done putting the cables in. I actually purchased a uh, access probe, so I plugged that into the housing as well before I put that cover on. Uh, routed the wire at the top, put the screws into place, and this part of the assembly was complete. So now towards the end, uh, we were finishing everything up. I, literally all you're doing is plugging the wires in and using zip ties to do some cable management. You're pretty much done besides squaring the machine off. That's gonna be your last step. But now we're just uh, doing cable management and I was missing some zip ties, so I used my own and we were pretty much done with that. So we set the router into the housing and I'm just making sure I have enough slack as that router moves across the X axis. You'll put some clips on the back 
and you, you basically you're making the clips out of the zip ties to hold it in place so it has enough slack to move freely but it's not dragging on top of the waste board. Well there you have it, it's complete, it's all set up. All you have left to do now is square the machine up and put on who made the machine. And I actually used my Cricut Maker to engrave my name into the actual plate. Uh, you could just use a marker, or I guess you could even use a Shapoko if you had an engraving tip already ready to go. But Anyhow, I did my uh, first jog. I'm jogging the machine around, just text testing all the access points, making sure that it's you know mo running smoothly, nothing's dragging. I actually even hooked up my dust collection to it just to make sure that I had enough pull. But I did my first cut the next day, and uh, I'd never done it before, and I think it came out pretty well for, no joke, the first cut ever uh, that I've done on a CNC machine. So, I absolutely love this machine. It's super, super cool. Uh, it cuts down production time so much, and there's so many new things that I can do with this, so I'm excited to, to make some more videos here in the future. This is what that first cut uh, turned out to look like, and. Like I said, I think it was super smooth. I ended up making a waste board uh, so I could A, not mess up the bottom board and B, I could hold different parts down uh, using clips. So there's a couple videos out there on how to make a waste board, but I'm just kind of quick time lapse of how I did mine. I got my plans from Myers Workshop. I'll put a link in the description to him as well. So here we go, It's this is it, this is the done product, but uh, you, you should sit down for a second, right? Just wait up, because you're about to see the sneak peek to the next video.